Hello, my name is Eleanor Yick, and I'm president of the League of Women Voters of Southwest Santa Clara Valley, which covers the cities of Los Gatos, Saratoga, Montecerino, and Campbell. I do want to thank the Silicon Valley Innovation Channel, Ding Ding TV, for inviting me here to speak today. There are five leagues in Santa Clara County covering all of our cities. The League of Women Voters of San Jose, Santa Clara, Cupertino, Sunnyvale, Los Altos Mountain View, Palo Alto, and my league, Southwest Santa Clara Valley. Look up your local league if you would like more information or if you would like to become more involved. The League of Women Voters has two distinct roles, voter service and advocacy. Voter service is when we present impartial, nonpartisan information to the electorate. The League never, and I want to emphasize, the League never supports or endorses any candidate or political party. But we do host candidate forums where we invite all the candidates, ask them all the same questions, and let them respond to the audience. And we present what's called pros and cons, which is what I'm going to do today to explain the ballot measures. We also advocate primarily on legislation if we have studied the issue and developed a policy statement. In addition to voting on candidates when you vote on November 6th this year, California voters are often asked to vote on proposed new laws called propositions. The ballot measures that propose new laws for the whole state are called propositions. Or if it's a new law proposed just for a local community, it is called a measure. They usually need over 50% yes votes to pass. Now I'd like to ask you a question. What are some big problems facing California today? When I've asked that question in groups, I've been told housing, affordable housing, water, infrastructure, and indeed, those are mentioned frequently. On this slide, you see the 11 state propositions that are being proposed, and you see four local measures. And indeed, if you look at the names of those propositions, you will see that many of them relate to housing. One of them relates specifically to infrastructure. Another relates to water. So as we go through these propositions, I will be explaining them to you. And I will be telling you some of the arguments that are for that proposition and some of the arguments that are against that proposition. And the important thing for you to remember is these arguments, whether pro or con, have come from people who either support it or oppose it, and they're trying to convince you to either vote for it or against it. So you have to read their arguments very carefully and look for key words. Now you'll notice here that the first four propositions are all bonds. Again, something we have to remember is that we all pay for bonds. The money either comes out of the general fund, which covers the whole state of California and comes from our property taxes and sales taxes, or it could be a bond that puts a levy on your property tax, usually something like $10 per $100,000 of assessed valuation. But it's, remember, it's important to remember that in the end, we're all paying for the bonds. So the first bond I'm going to talk about indeed talks about housing. It's a bond for specified housing and an assistance program. This bond authorizes $4 billion in general obligation bonds to fund existing housing programs, which includes money for multifamily housing, loans to help veterans, uh, loans for infill and transit-oriented housing projects, farm worker housing program, and some money for manufactured and mobile homes. It provides housing assistance for buyers, infrastructure financing, and matching grants to expand affordable housing. Some of the arguments for it, and again, these are written by people who are giving you their best argument to convince you to vote for their bond. 
It's the only proposition that directly addresses the shortage of housing by building more affordable housing without raising taxes. One billion goes to the CalVet program, which will be repaid by those vets. It provides for safe, affordable housing for victims of domestic abuse and affordable homes for hardworking people. Proposition one is expected to create tens of thousands of jobs. What do some people say against it? They ask, how far in debt is the government? Proposition one would only provide housing for a small number of people. And then they ask you, should we continue to fund bonds from our property taxes, which many people consider to be unfair here in California? So your yes vote means, I agree. I allow the state to sell four billion in general obligation bonds to fund existing programs. A no vote means that no, I don't agree with this. Our second bond is specifically a bond for existing housing for individuals with mental illness. It ratifies an existing law which established a program called No Place Like Home. Which finances permanent housing for individuals with mental illness who are homeless. It ratifies issuance of two billion in previously authorized bonds to finance this program, and it amends the Mental Health Services Act to authorize transfers of up to 140 million annually from the existing Mental Health Services Fund. People who support this say 20,000 permanent supporting housing units will be built under the No Place Like Home program. This program allows coordinated care of mental health and substance abuse, medical care, case managers, education, and job training to help people get the treatment and housing stability they need. They say Prop 2 is not a tax, and there is no extra cost to the taxpayer. And lastly, they use the same argument: funds are tied up in challenges regarding interpretation of coverage that was provided and approved by the voters in Proposition 63. We simply need voter approval to cut through the red tape and focus on building this kind of housing. The people who are against it. Say this should have been called the Bureaucrat and Developer Enrichment Act. It spends billions in treatment funds that Proposition 63 dedicated to the severely mentally ill 14 years ago. They say counties should make decisions when it comes to housing for people with severe mental illness. They say it's unnecessary, and more importantly, it says it does nothing to address systemic legal barriers like limited state protection against restrictive local zoning that make it very difficult to build supportive housing for groups like the severely mentally ill. Your yes vote means that the state could use existing county mental health funds to pay for housing for those with mental illness. A no vote means the state's ability to use existing county mental health funds to pay for those with mental illness who are homeless would depend on future court decisions. Proposition three is a little bit different. This is a bond for water projects, and we know that water is certainly a major issue here in California. This authorizes actually the highest bond that's ever been proposed for water projects in California. It authorizes 8.9 billion dollars in state general obligation bonds for various infrastructure programs, money for state water and water quality. Money for watershed and fisheries improvement, money for habitat protection, improved water conveyance, groundwater sustainability, surface water. It requires certain projects to provide matching funds from non-state sources, and it gives priority to disadvantaged communities. Supporters say. Prop 3 meets California's urgent, critical need to secure a safe, reliable, clean water supply by increasing mountain water runoff, repairing existing canals, repairing Oroville and other dams, improving water quality, using purified, recycled water.
We know how vulnerable California is to drought. This bond makes prudent investments to protect our water supply and to restore wildlife habitat. People who argue against this proposition say, since 1996, there have been eight statewide bond measures committing money to water issues. So far, the total amount is $29 billion. What do we have to show for this? Not one thing that will get us more water. Not one penny of that money went to build a new dam. In the past, those who benefited from water projects paid for them. This bond shifts the cost to California taxpayers. There is no legislative oversight of spending. Instead, other agencies will decide how and when to dispense funds. A yes vote means that the state could sell $8.9 billion in general obligation bonds to fund various water and environmental projects. And a no vote means no, the state could not sell that bond. Our next uh, proposition is a bond for children's hospital. It authorizes 4.5, no, I'm sorry, it authorizes 1.5 billion in bonds to fund grants for construction, expansion, renovation, and equipping, equipping of qualifying children's hospitals. It designates 72% of the funds to the qualifying eight private nonprofit hospitals, which provide comprehensive services to high volumes of children who are eligible for governmental programs. 18% of the funds would go to the five public University of California children's hospitals, and 10% of the funds would go to public and private hospitals. People who are for this proposition say there are eight private California not-for-profit children's hospitals and five more public University of California children's hospitals. Over two million times a year, seriously ill children receive highly specialized care in a California children's hospital, no matter what a family can pay. They have become regional hubs. Children come from all over California. And Prop 4 asks voters to consider investing less than $40 per year for each patient we see, money to help us build more capacity to cure children. People who argue against it say, what is the total cost of the measure to the public? 72% of the funds generated would go to the eight private not-for-profit children's hospitals, Borrowing money to further subsidize children's hospitals, we should first look at improving the entire health care system. And the same argument about property taxes. Should voters continue to finance projects through higher property taxes when California's property tax system is so unfair? Because business property can be and is often leased instead of sold, Proposition 13 has led to a massive shift of the overall property tax burden from businesses to homeowners. Proposition 4, a yes vote. The state could sell $1.5 billion in general obligation funds to fund construction, renovation, et cetera, of the qualifying children's hospitals. A no vote means that no, the state could not sell those bonds. Our next proposition is also one that has been put forth trying to address the housing shortage in California. The thinking behind this proposition is, if we make it more attractive to seniors to sell their home, perhaps more seniors will sell their home and then we'll have additional housing for people to buy. Currently, all Californians who are 55 or over, severely disabled, or whose home has been lost due to a natural disaster, can decide to sell their home under Prop 13 and buy a new home of equal or lesser value and keep their same property tax. And you can do this once. And it used to be that you could do this, you could buy a replacement home in any one of the 58 counties in California. But over time, many counties began to deny it because they lost too much money. So today, only 10 counties allow that. 
You are also, as a California senior, when you sell your home, there is a one-time federal deduction of $250,000 for a single person, $500,000 for a couple, to deduct, and then you pay capital gains on the rest of the amount, which is the increase in your property's value. This proposition wants to change those regulations. They want to extend the regulations so that seniors can sell their homes not only and buy one of equal or lesser value, they could also choose to buy one of greater value. And they can apply their current tax to that new home. If the new home has a lesser assessed value, then they would pay that tax rate. If the new home costs more and has a greater tax uh, regulation, they can apply what they're paying right now to that tax bill and only pay the difference between the two. Prop 5, they say, does not raise the cost of housing, does not take money away from public safety or public schools. Opponents urge no on Prop 5 for one simple reason. They say, we have a terrible affordable housing problem in California, and this proposition does nothing to make this better. It, they claim Prop 5 will further raise the cost of housing, will lead to hundreds of billions of dollars, potentially, potentially one billion, in local revenue losses to our public schools. And it will also cost local services. It gives a huge windfall to wealthy Californians who can continue to buy bigger and bigger houses and still apply part of that lower tax rate. And they say it gives a huge windfall to the real estate industry, the only sponsor of this initiative. And they claim it does not build new housing or address the other housing issues. A yes vote means that you want to basically change some of the benefits of Prop 13. You want to extend those benefits so that all homeowners who are over 55, et cetera, can sell their property and they're eligible to move to a house of equal, lesser, or greater value and perhaps save some money on their taxes. A no vote means you want to leave Proposition 13 the way it is right now with the same regulations. The next proposition is another very controversial one that many people have strong feelings about. This proposition wants to eliminate road repair funding, which requires fuel taxes and vehicle fees. In 2017, the legislature passed a transportation bill, the first one in something like 20 years, which imposed increased taxes on gas, diesel fuel, car registrations, hybrid vehicles, and many people got very upset about those increases. So this proposition wants to repeal that law. They want to get rid of that law, and they also at the same time want to amend the state constitution that requires the legislature in the future if they want to pass any transportation bill, first it has to go to the electorate and get a 50% vote. People who are for it say, yes, Prop 6 repeals the massive increase in gas, diesel, and car taxes imposed by the legislature just last year. It amends the state constitution to require voter approval for any future attempts to pass this kind of legislation it will immediately lower the price you pay for gas. They say California has a $16 billion budget, but those Sacramento politicians are wasting their money on parks and trails, etc. And they also say hidden in the legislature's gas tax bill is a clause that allows the state tax to automatically increase every year without a vote of the people. That is in that tax bill. It allows it to be adjusted for inflation. Arguments against it, firefighters, highway patrolmen, etc., are all against it, and they urge a no vote on Prop 6 because it will stop critical transportation projects and jeopardize the safety of our bridges and roads. Prop 6 eliminates funding for almost 6,500 local transportation improvement projects on already underway in many, many California communities. Prop 6 
if it passes, would eliminate thousands of jobs and hurts our economy. Bottom line, if you vote yes, you want to repeal SB1, which was the transportation bill that fuel and vehicle taxes recently passed by the legislature would be amended and would be eliminated, which would reduce funding for road repair. You want to amend the state constitution so the legislature cannot pass a law like this again without a vote of the people. And a no vote means it does not repeal SB1 and it wants to keep that law in effect and it does not amend the constitution, the state constitution. The legislature could continue to pass legislation <clears throat> for new or increased state and vehicle taxes in the future. The next proposition I'm really just going to skim through. It's about, it says, conforms daylight savings time to federal law. I'm going to tell you what this is about. This proposition wants to eliminate daylight savings time the way we know it now. We all know we switch our clocks two times a year. This proposition is proposing, let's get rid of that and we'll make what we now call daylight savings time Pacific Standard Time. Now this is an advisory measure that the electorate gets to vote on, then it has to go to the legislature to pass it with a two-thirds vote, and if it does get passed there, it ultimately goes to the federal government that makes the final decision. So that's all I'm going to say about this proposition. The next one is an important one. It regulates the amount kidney dialysis clinics charge. More and more of us see more and more dialysis clinics uh, being built in our cities and towns. This proposition would limit the charges to 115% of the cost for direct patient care and quality improvement costs, including training, patient education, and technology support. It requires rebates and penalties if the charges exceed the limit. It requires annual reporting to the state and it prohibits clinics from refusing to treat patients based on the source of their payment. Supporters say big corporate dialysis providers, which make billions of dollars each year by charging these critically ill patients as much as $150,000 a year, won't invest enough in basic sanitation. Some people complain that some of these clinics are really not well kept up and that this is a danger to these ill people who go there. It says Prop 8 will provide strong incentives for dialysis companies to lower their costs, improve their quality care, and refund excessive profits. Dialysis corporations mark up the cost of care for some patients by 350% an expense absorbed by insurance companies and passed on to policyholders in California. There are 588 dialysis clinics in California, most of which are owned by one or two, one of two very large corporations. People against it say, no, 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 Prop 8 will force community clinics to cut services. It severely limits what insurance companies are required to pay for dialysis care. These arbitrary limits will not cover the actual cost of providing care. It is estimate, estimated that Prop 8 will result in 83% of dialysis clinics operating at a loss that could force them to close. Without access to community clinics, patients will have to travel long distances, miss treatments, or end up in the emergency room. Proposition 8, bottom line, a yes vote means that you do want kidney dialysis clinics would have their revenues limited by a formula and could be required to pay rebates to certain parties that pay for dialysis treatment. A no vote means basically you want to leave things the way they are now, that kidney dialysis clinics would not have their revenue limited by a formula and would not be required to pay rebates. Uh, the next proposition, which I'm going to spend some time on, is Proposition 10. It expands local government authority to enact rent control. This is another proposition that was put forth with the idea that if we had more rent control, that we could more easily control the cost of renting and more people could afford to live in local communities. 
So what this does, this proposition, in 1949, California implemented rent control for the first time in, I think, seven to 10 large cities. And from 1949 to 1995, the individual local towns and cities implemented their rent control policies, deciding which buildings could be subject to rent control, how much increases could be, et cetera. In 1995, the Costa-Hawkins law was passed, which restricted the kinds of buildings that could be subject to rent control. You couldn't have rent control on new construction built after 1995. You couldn't have it on single-family residences. You couldn't have it on accessory dwellings or granny units or private homes. This proposition wants to change that. They want to basically repeal the Costa-Hawkins law, and bring the decision-making back to the local community to make the decisions on rent control. The arguments for, says rents are too high, Prop 10 will free our local communities to decide what rent control protections are needed. Many people who should be the foundations of our community can't live there because the rents are too high. This is an important point. It does not force any community to adopt any rent control measure that would not be a good fit for their own housing situation. So if you live in a town or city that already has rent control, they would have more control over the policies. If you live in a town or city that does not have rent control, they don't have to have rent control. They could decide to implement it or they could decide not to implement it. Prop 10, they say, is a limited measure that answers one question. Who decides housing policy? People against it, they say it's badly flawed and will make our housing crisis worse. Prop 10 could hurt home homeowners by authorizing a new government bureaucracy that can tell homeowners what they can and cannot do with their privately owned homes. It puts bureaucrats in charge of housing. Some claim Prop 10 could increase costs for local governments by tens of millions of dollars. A yes vote means that you want to repeal the Costa-Hawkins law so that the state would not limit the kinds of rent control laws that cities and counties have. A no vote means keep the Costa-Hawkins law that's in place right now so that the state would continue to limit the kinds of rent control law cities and counties can have. I'm going to also skip over Proposition 11 because I think it's easy for you to read and make a decision. And Proposition 12, which is about farm animals, again, which you can read and make decisions on. I do want to spend a moment on our four local measures. Measure A is countywide. Basically, this measure is asking voters to approve the one eighth cent sales tax that was implemented back in 2012 and is due to expire in 2023. They say they want to change it so that it has no ending date. It would go on forever. So it's not a new tax, but it's an extension of that one eighth cent sales tax would be permanently in place. That is measure A. The next measure I'm going to talk about is the West Valley Mission College Community District, who also wants to pass their third bond measure for $698 million, which would be levied on property at $13 per 100,000, and they would like you to approve it, and they've provided for oversight, audits, and no money for administrator salaries or pensions. They have passed two bonds already in 2004. One was passed for 235 million. And in 2012, Measure C was issued for 350 million. And this third bond, Measure W, is proposed for 698 million. And there are some arguments for it. Certainly our community colleges serve many students in many of our cities. And there's very little argument against it. Mainly it was about that the board always awards contracts to union uh, companies and people question whether you get the best uh, quality when you have to do that. So a yes vote means that you do approve of the West Valley Mission Community College District, Measure W, and a no vote means no.
And lastly, I would like to say, remember to vote on November 6, 2018. Check out this website for more info, votersedge.org slash CA. You enter your address and your zip code and your ballot comes up. And you can get individual and you can get more information on candidates and all of the ballot measures. And also, you can go to our website, lwvc.org slash ballot measures, and you can find more information there. I hope you found this presentation hopeful and helpful to you in making your decisions to be an informed voter. Thank you very much.